Dramatis Personae of A Drama of Exile. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Drama of Exile by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Dramatis Personae. Lucifer. Read by Patrick Beverley. Gabriel. Read by J. Saunders. Adam. Read by David Klaparek. Eve. Read by Gemma Blythe. Christ. Read by David Muncaster. Narrator. Revel Voices and Aged Voices. Read by Barry Eads. Eden Spirits and Earth Spirits. Read by Margaret Espayat. Spirits of the Trees. Recording by Andrea Lee. River Spirits and Second Spirit. Read by Miriam Esther Goldman. Bird Spirit by Van Rose. The Flower Spirits. Read by Crystal Layton. Morning Star, Angel Chorus, First Semi Chorus, Second Semi Chorus, and Youthful Voices. Read by Niru Ayur. First Spirit and Love Voices. Read by Rissa Byrne. Poet of Voices, read by Mia Saunders. The Poet Voices, read by Aaron Elliott. Philosophic Voices, read by Simon Lawa. In Scene 3, two of Lucifer's lines are read by Peter Y, and two of Gabriel's lines are read by Carl Manchester. End of Dramatis Personae A Drama of Exile by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Drama of Exile. Scene 1. Scene. The outer side of the Gate of Eden shut fast with cloud, from the depth of which revolves a sword of fire, self-moved. Adam and Eve are seen in the distance, flying along the glare. Lucifer alone. Rejoice in the clefts of Gehenna, my exiled, my host. Earth has exiles as hopeless as when a heaven's empire was lost. Through the seams of her shaken foundations, smoke up in great joy. With the smoke of your fierce exultations, deform and destroy. Smoke up with your lurid revenges, and darken the face of the white heavens, and taunt them with changes from glory and grace. We, in falling, while destiny strangles, pull down with us all. Let them look to the rest of their angels. Who's safe from a fall? He saves not. Where's Adam? Can pardon requicken that sod? Unkinged is the king of the garden, the image of God. Other exiles are cast out of Eden. More curse has been hurled. Come up, O oh my locusts, and feed in the green of the world. Come up, we have conquered by evil. Good reigns not alone. I prevail now, and, angel or devil, Inherit a throne. In sudden apparition, a watch of innumerable angels, rank above rank, slopes up from around the gates to the zenith. The angel Gabriel descends. Hail, Gabriel, the keeper of the gate. Now that the fruit is plucked, Prince Gabriel, I hold that Eden is impregnable under thy keeping. Angel of the sin, such as you stance, pale in the drear light, which rounds the rebel's work with maker's wrath, there shalt be an idea to all souls, a monumental melancholy gloom, seen down all ages whence to mark despair, and measure out the distances from good, go from us straight away. Wherefore? Lucifer, thy last step in this place trod sorrow up, recoil before that sorrow, if not this sword. Angels are in the world, wherefore not I? Exiles are in the world, wherefore not I? The cursed are in the world, wherefore not I? Depart. And where's the logic of depart? Our Lady Eve had half been satisfied to obey her Maker, if I had not learned to fix my postulate better. 
Dost thou dream of guarding some monopoly in heaven instead of earth? Why, I can dream with thee to the length of thy wings. I do not dream. This is not heaven, even a dream, nor earth. As earth was once first breathed among the stars, Articulate glory from the mouth divine, To which the myriad spheres thrilled audibly, Touched like lute-string and the sons of God. Said Amen, singing it, I know that this Is earth not new created, but new cursed, This Eden's gate not opened, but built up, With a final cloud of sunset, do I dream? Alas, not so, this is the Eden lost, By Lucifer the serpent, this sword, This sword alive with justice and with fire, that smote upon the forehead Lucifer, the angel. Wherefore, angel, go, depart. Enough is sinned and suffered. By no means. Here's a brave earth to sin and suffer on. It holds fast still. It cracks not under curse. It holds like mine immortal. Presently will sow it thick enough with graves as green, or greener, certes, than its knowledge tree. We'll have the cypress for the tree of life, more eminent for shadow. For the rest, we'll build it dark, with towns and pyramids, and temples, if it please you. We'll have feasts and funerals also, merry-makes and wars, till blood and wine shall mix and run along right o'er the edges. And, good Gabriel, ye like that word in heaven, I too have strength. Strength to behold him, and not worship him, Strength to fall from him, and not cry on him. Strength to be in the universe, and yet neither God nor his servant. The red sign burnt on my forehead, which you taunt me with, is God's sign that it bows not unto God. The potter's mark upon his work, to show it rings well to the striker. I and the earth can bear more curse. O miserable earth! O ruined angel! Well... And if it be, I chose this ruin. I elected it of my will, not of service. What I do, I do volition, not obedient, and overtop thy crown with my despair. My sorrow crowns me. Get thee back to heaven, and leave me to the earth, which is mine own, in virtue of her ruin, as I hers in virtue of my revolt. Turn thou from both, that bright, impassive, passive angelhood, and spare to read us backward any more of the spent hallelujahs. Spirit of scorn, I might say of unreason, I might say, that who despairs acts, that who acts convives, with God's relations set in a time and space, that who elects assumes a something good, which God made possible, that who lives obeys, the law of a life-maker. Let it pass. No more, thou Gabriel. What if I stand up and strike my brow against the crystalline roofing the creatures? Shall I say, for that, my stature is too high for me to stand, henceforward I must sit? Sit thou. I kneel. A heavenly answer. Get thee to thy heaven and leave my earth to me. Through heaven and earth, God's will moves freely, and I follow. As colours follow light, he overflows. The firmamental walls with deity, therefore with love, his lightnings go abroad, his pity may do so, his angels must, whene'er he gives them charge. Verily, I and my demons, who are spirits of scorn, might hold this charge of standing with a sword twixt man and his inheritance, as well as the benignest angel of you all. Thou speakest in the shadow of thy charge. If thou hadst gazed upon the face of God, this morning for a moment thou hadst known that only pity fitly can chastise, hate but avenges. As it is, I know something of pity. When I reeled in heaven, and my sword grew too heavy for my grasp, stabbing through matter which it could not pierce so much as the first shell of, toward the throne, when I fell back, down, staring up as I fell, the lightnings holding open my scathed lids, and that thought of the infinite of God hurled after to precipitate descent, when countless angel faces, still and stern, pressed out upon me from the level heavens, adown the abysmal spaces, and I fell, trampled down by your stillness, and struck blind by the sight within your eyes, 
"'Twas then I knew how ye could pity my kind angelhood. Alas, discrowned one, by the truth in me, Which God keeps in me, I would give away, Or save that truth and his love keeping it, To lead thee home again into the light, And hear thy voice chant with the morning stars, When their rays tremble round them with much song, Sung in more gladness. Sing, my morning star, last beautiful, Last heavenly that I loved, if I could drench thy golden locks with tears, what were it to this angel? What love is, and now I have named God. Yet, Gabriel, by the lie in me which I keep myself, thou art a false swearer. Were it otherwise, what dost thou hear, vouchsafing tender thoughts to that earth angel, or earth demon, which, thou and I have not solved the problem yet enough to argue, that fallen Adam there, that red clay in a breath, who must forsooth live in a new apocalypse of sense, with beauty and music waving in his trees, and running in his rivers, to make glad his soul made perfect. Is it not for hope, a hope within thee deeper than thy truth, of finally conducting him and his, to fill the vacant thrones of me and mine, which affront heaven with their vacuity? Angel, there are no vacant thrones in heaven, to suit thy empty words, glory and life. Fulfill your own depletions, and if God sighed you far from him, his next breath drew in, a compensative splendour up the vast, flushing the starry arteries. With a change. So let the vacant thrones and gardens too fill as may please you, and be pitiful, as ye translate that word, to the dethroned and exiled, man or angel. The fact stands that I, the rebel, the cast out and down, am here and will not go, while there, along the light to which ye flash the desert out, flies your adopted Adam, your red clay in two kinds, both being flawed. Why, what is this? Whose work is this? Whose hand was in the work? Against whose hand? In this last strife, methinks I am not a fallen angel. Doth thou know aught of those exiles? I, I know they have fled silent all day along the wilderness. I know they wear, for burden on their backs, the thought of a shut gate of paradise, and faces of the marshalled cherubim shining against not for them. And I know they dare not look in one another's face, as if each were a cherub. Dost thou know aught of their future? Only as much as this, that evil will increase and multiply without a benediction. Nothing more. Why so, the angels taunt? What should be more? God is more. Proving what? That he is God, and capable of saving Lucifer. I charge thee by the solitude he kept, ere he created, leave the earth to God. My foot is on the earth, firm as my sin. I charge thee by the memory of heaven, ere any sin was done, leave earth to God. My sin is on the earth, to reign thereon. I charge thee by the choral song we sang, when up against the white shore of our feet the depths of creation swell and break, and the new world's beaded foam and flower, of all that coil roared outward into space, on thunder edges leave the earth to God. My woe is on the earth, to curse thereby. I charge thee by that mournful star which trembles. Enough spoken. As the pine in Norland forest drops its weight of snows by a night's growth, so, growing towards my ends, I drop thy counsels. Farewell, Gabriel. Watch out thy service. I achieve my will. And peradventure in the after years, when thoughtful men shall bend their spacious brows upon the storm and strife seen everywhere, to ruffle their smooth manhood, and break up with lurid lights of intermittent hope their human fear and wrong, they may discern the heart of a lost angel in the earth. Chorus of Eden Spirits, Chanting from Paradise, While Adam and Eve Fly Across the Sword Glare Hearken, O oh hearken, let your souls behind you Turn gently moved. Our voices steal along the dread to find you, O oh, lost beloved, through the thick shielded and strong marshaled angels they press and pierce. Our requiems follow fast on our evangels, voice throbs in verse. 
We are but orphaned spirits left in Eden a long time ago. God gave us golden cups, and we were bidden to feed you so. But now our right hand hath no cup remaining, no work to do. The mystic hydromel is spilt and staining the whole earth through. Most ineradicable stains for showing, not interfused, that brighter colors were the world's foregoing than shall be used. Hearken, O oh hearken, ye shall hearken surely, for years and years, the noise beside you dripping coldly, purely, of spirit's tears. The yearning to a beautiful denied you shall strain your powers. Ideal sweetnesses shall overglide you, resumed from ours. In all your music, our pathetic minor, your ears shall cross, and all good gifts shall mind you of diviner, with sense of loss. We shall be near you in your poet languors and wild extremes, what time ye vex the desert with vain angers, or mock with dreams, and when upon you, weary after roaming, death's seal is put, by the foregone ye shall discern the coming, through eyelids shut. Hark, the Eden trees are stirring, soft and solemn in your hearing, oak and linden, palm and fir, tamarisk and juniper, each still throbbing in vibration since that crowning of creation, when the God-breath spake abroad, let us make man like to God. And the pines stood quivering as the awful word went by, like a vibrant music string stretched from mountain peak to sky. And the platen did expand, slow and gradual, branch and head, and the cedar's strong black shade fluttered brokenly and grand. Grove and wood were swept aslant in an emotion jubilant, which divine impulsion cleaves in dim movements to the leaves, dropped and lifted, dropped and lifted, in the sunlight greenly sifted, in the sunlight and the moonlight greenly sifted through the trees. Ever wave the Eden trees, in the nightlight and the moonlight, with a ruffling of green branches, shaded off to resonances, never stirred by rain or breeze. Fare ye well, farewell. The sylvan sounds, no longer audible, expire at Eden's door. Each footstep of your treading, treads out some murmur which ye heard before. Farewell, the trees of Eden, ye shall hear, nevermore. Hark the flow of the four rivers, hark the flow, how the silence round you shivers while our voices through it go, cold and clear. Think a little, while ye hear of the banks where the willows and the deer crowd in intermingled ranks, as if all would drink at once where the living water runs, of the fish's golden edges flashing in and out the sedges of the swans on silver thrones, Floating down the winding streams, with impassive eyes turned shoreward, and a chant of undertones, and the lotus leaning forward to help them into dreams. Fare ye well, farewell, the river sounds no longer audible, expire at Eden's door, each footstep of your treading treads out some murmur which ye heard before. Farewell, the streams of Eden, ye shall hear nevermore. I am the nearest nightingale that singeth in Eden after you, and I am singing loud and true and sweet. I do not fail. I sit upon a cypress bough close to the gate, and I fling my song over the gate and through the mail of the warden angels marshalled strong, over the gate and after you. And the warden angels let it pass, because the poor brown bird, alas, sings in the garden sweet and true. And I build my song of high pure notes, note after note, height over height, till I strike the arch of the infinite, and I bridge abysmal agonies with strong, clear calms of harmonies, and something abides, and something floats, in the song which I sing after you. Fare ye well, farewell, the creature sounds, no longer audible, expire at Eden's door. Each footstep of your treading treads out some cadence which ye heard before. Farewell, the birds of Eden, ye shall hear nevermore. 
We linger, we linger, the last of the throng, like the tones of a singer who loves his own song. We are spirit aromas of blossom and bloom. We call your thoughts home as ye breathe our perfume. To the amaranth splendor of fire on the slopes, to the lily bells tender and gray heliotropes, to the poppy plains keeping such dream breath and bleed that the angels their stepping grew whiter to see. To the nook set with molly ye jested one day in, Till your smile waxed too holy and left your lips praying, To the rose in the bower place that dripped o'er you sleeping, To the asphodel flower place ye walked angle deep in, We pluck at your amend, we stroke down your hair, We faint in our lament and pine into air, Fare ye well, farewell, the Eden sense no longer sensible expire at Eden's door. Each footstep of your treading treads out some fragrance which ye knew before. Farewell, the flowers of Eden ye shall smell nevermore. There is silence. Adam and Eve fly on and never look back. Only a colossal shadow, as of the dark angel passing quickly, is cast upon the sword glare. End of scene one. A Drama of Exile by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Drama of Exile. Scene two. Scene. The Extremity of the Sword Glare. Pausing a moment on this outer edge, where the supernal sword glare cuts in light, the dark exterior desert. Hast thou strength, beloved, to look behind us to the gate? Have I not strength to look up to thy face? We need be strong, yon spectacle of cloud, which seals the gate up to the final doom. Is God's seal manifest? There seem to lie a hundred thunders in it, dark and dead. The unmolten lightnings vain it motionless, and, outward from its depth, the self-moved sword swings slow its awful gnomon of red fire, from side to side, in pendulous horror slow. Across the stagnant, ghastly glare, thrown flat. On the intermediate ground, from that to this, the angelic hosts, the archangelic pomps, thrones, domination, princedoms, rank on rank, rising sublimely to the feet of God, on either side and overhead the gate, show like a glittering, and sustained smoke, drawn to an apex, that their faces shine betwixt the solemn clasping of their wings, clasped high to a silver point above their heads, we only guess from hence, and not discern. Though we were near enough to see them shine, the shadow on thy face were awfuler to me, at least to me, than all their light. What is this, Eve? Thou droppest heavily in a heap earthenward, and thy body heaves under the golden floodings of thine hair. O oh, Adam, Adam, by that name of Eve, thine Eve, thy life, which suits me little now, seeing that I now confess myself thy death and thine undoer, as the snake was mine, I do adjure thee, put me straight away, together with my name. Sweet, punish me, O oh, love, be just, and ere we pass beyond the light cast outward by the fiery sword into the dark, which earth must be to us. Bruise my head with thy foot. As the curse said, my seed shall the first tempters strike with curse, as God struck in the garden, and as he, being satisfied with justice and with wrath, did roll his thunder gentler at the close. Thou, peradventure, mayst at last recoil to some soft need of mercy. Strike, my lord. I also, after tempting, writhe on the ground, and I would feed on ashes from thine hand, as suits me, O oh, my tempted. My beloved, mine Eve and life, I have no other name for thee or for the sun than what ye are, my utter life and light. If we have fallen, it is that we have sinned, we. God is just, and since his curse does comprehend us both, 
it must be that his balance holds the weights of first and last sin on a level. What, shall I, who had not virtue to stand straight among the hills of Eden, here assume to mend the justice of the perfect God, by piling up a curse upon his curse against thee, thee? Was so, perchance, thy God might take thee into grace for scorning me, thy wrath against the sinner giving proof of inward abrogation of the sin. And so, the blessed angels might come down and walk with thee as erst. I think they would, because I was not near to make them sad, or soil the rustling of their innocence. They know me. I am deepest in the guilt, if last in the transgression. Thou. If God, who gave the right and joyance of the world, both unto thee and me, gave thee to me the best gift last, the last sin was the worst, which sinned against more complement of gifts and grace of giving. God, I render back strong benediction and perpetual praise from mortal feeble lips, and incense smoke out of a little censer may fill heaven, that thou, in striking my benumbed hands, and forcing them to drop all other boons of beauty and dominion and delight, hast left this well-beloved Eve, this life within life, this best gift between their palms in gracious compensation. Is it thy voice, or some saluting angels, calling all my feet into the garden? O oh, my God! I stand here between the glory and dark, the glory of thy wrath projected forth from Eden's wall, and dark of our distress, which settles a step off in that drear world. Lift up to thee the hands from whence hath fallen only creation's scepter, thanking thee that rather thou hast cast me out with her than left me lorn of her in paradise. With angel looks and angel songs around, to show the absence of her eyes and voice, to make society full desertness without her use and comfort. Where is loss? Am I in Eden? Can another speak mine own love's tongue? Because with her I stand, upright as far as I can be in this fall, and look away from heaven which doth accuse, and look away from earth which doth convict, into her face and crown my discrowned brow out of her love and put the thought of her around me for an eden full of birds and lift her body up thus to my heart and with my lips upon her lips thus thus do quicken and sublimate my mortal breath which cannot climb against the grave's steep sides but overtops this grief i am renewed my eyes grow with the light which is in thine the silence of my heart is full of sound. Hold me up so, because I comprehend this human love. I shall not be afraid of any human death. And yet, because I know the strength of love, I seem to know death's strength by that same sign. Kiss on my lips, to shut the door close on my rising soul lest it pass outwards in astonishment, and leave thee lonely. Yet thou liest, Eve, bent heavily on thyself across mine arm, and face fiat to the sky. Ay, and the tears running, as it might seem, my life from me, they run so fast and warm. Let me lie so, and weep so, as if in a dream or prayer, unfastening. Clasp by clasp, the hard, tight thought which clipped my heart, and showed me evermore. Loathed of thy justice, as I loathe the snake, and as the pure ones loathe all sin. Today, all day, beloved, as we fled across this desolating radiance, cast by swords, not suns, my lips prayed soundless to myself, striking against each other. O oh, Lord God! Twas so I prayed. I ask thee by my sin, and by thy curse, and by thy blameless heavens, make dreadful haste to hide me from thy face, and from the face of my beloved here, for whom I am no helpmeet. Quick away into the new dark mystery of death. I will lie still there. I will make no blame. I will not sigh, nor sob, nor speak a word. 
nor struggle to come back beneath the sun where peradventure i might sin anew against thy mercy and his pleasure death oh death whatever it be is good enough for such as i am while for adam here no voice shall say again in heaven or earth it is not good for him to be alone and it was good for such a prayer to pass my unkind eve betwixt our mutual lives if i am exiled must i be bereaved was an ill prayer it shall be prayed no more and god did use it like a foolishness giving no answer now my heart has grown too high and strong for such a foolish prayer love makes it strong and since i was the first in the transgression with a steady foot I will be the first to tread from this sword glare into the outer darkness of the waste, and thus I do it. Thus I follow thee, as erewhile in the sin. What sounds? What sounds? I feel a music which comes straight from heaven, as tender as a watering dew. I think that angels, not those guarding paradise, but the love angels who came earth to us, and when we said God fainted unawares back from our mortal presence unto god as if he drew them inward in a breath his name being heard of them i think they with sliding voices lean from heavenly towers invisible but gracious hark how soft chorus of invisible angels mortal man and woman go upon your travel heaven assist the human smoothly to unravel all that web of pain wherein ye are holding do ye know our voices chanting down the golden do ye guess our choice is being unbeholden to be hearkened by you yet again this pure door of opal god hath shut between us us his shining people you who once have seen us and are blinded new yet across the doorway Past the silence reaching, farewells evermore may. Blessing in the teaching, glide from us to you. Think how erst your Eden, day on day succeeding, with our presence load, we came as if the heavens were bowed, to a milder music rare. Ye saw us in our solemn treading, treading down the steps of cloud, while our wings, outspreading, double calms of whiteness, Drop superfluous brightness down from stair to stair. Or oft, abrupt though tender, while ye gazed on space, we flashed our angel splendor in either human face, with mystic lilies in our hands from the atmospheric bands, breaking with a sudden grace, we took you unaware, while our feet struck glories outward smooth and fair, which we stood on floor wise platformed in mid-air or oft when heaven descended stood we in your wandering sight in a mute apocalypse with dumb vibrations on our lips from hosannas ended and grand half vanishings of the imperial things within our eyes belated till the heavenly infinite falling off from the created left our inward contemplation opened into ministration then upon our axle turning of great joy to sympathy we sang out the morning broadening up the sky or we drew our music true the noontide's hush and heat and shine informed with our intense divine interrupted vital notes palpitating hither thither burning out into the ether sensible like fiery motes or whenever twilight drifted through the sedar masses, the globed sun we lifted, trailing purple, trailing gold, out between the passes of the mountains manifold, to anthems slowly sung, while he, a weary, half in swoon, for joy to hear our climbing tune, transpierced the star's concentric rings, the burden of his glory flung in broken lights upon our wings. The chant dies away confusedly, and Lucifer appears. Now may all fruits be pleasant to thy lips, beautiful Eve, 
The times have somewhat changed since thou and I had talk beneath a tree, albeit ye are not gods yet. Adam, hold my right hand strongly. It is Lucifer, and we have love to lose. In the name of God, go apart from us, O thou Lucifer, and leave us to the desert thou hast made out of thy treason. Bring no serpent slime athwart this path kept holy to our tears, or we may curse thee with their bitterness. Curse freely. Curses thicken. Why, this Eve, who thought me once part worthy of her ear, and somewhat wiser than the other beasts, drawing together her large globes of eyes, the light of which is throbbing in and out their steadfast continuity of gaze, knots her fair eyebrows in so hard a knot, and down from her white heights of womanhood looks on me so amazed. I scarce should fear to wager such an apple as she plucked, against one riper from the tree of life, that she could curse, too, as a woman may, smooth in the vowels. So, speak wickedly. I like it best so. Let thy words be wounds. For so, I shall not fear thy power to hurt. Trench on the forms of good by open ill. For so, I shall wax strong and grand with scorn, scorning myself for ever trusting thee as far as thinking. Ere a snake ate dust, he could speak wisdom. Our new gods, it seems, deal more in thunders than in courtesies. And sooth, mine own Olympus, which anon I shall build up to loud-voiced imagery from all the wandering visions of the world, may show worse railing than Our Lady Eve pours o'er the rounding of her argent arm. But why should this be? Adam pardoned Eve. Adam loved Eve. Jehovah pardon both. Adam forgave Eve, because loving Eve. So, well. Yet Adam was undone of Eve, as both were by the snake. Therefore forgive, in like wise, fellow temptress, the poor snake, who stung there not so poorly. Hold thy wrath, beloved Adam. Let me answer him, for this time he speaks truth, which we should hear and ask for mercy, which I most should grant, in like wise, as he tells us, in like wise. And therefore thee I pardon, Lucifer, as freely as the streams of Eden flowed when we were happy by them. So depart, leave us to walk the remnant of our time out mildly in the desert. Do not seek to harm us any more, or scoff at us, or ere the dust be laid upon our face to find there the communion of the dust, an issue of the dust. Go. At once, go. Forgive, and go. Ye images of clay, shrunk somewhat in the mould, what jest is this? What words are these to use? By what a thought conceive ye of me? Yesterday, a snake. Today, what? A strong spirit. A sad spirit. Perhaps a fallen angel. Who shall say? Who told thee, Adam? Thou, the prodigy of thy vast brows and melancholy eyes, which comprehend the height of some great fall. I think thou hast one day worn a crown under the eyes of God. And why of God? It were no crown else. Verily, I think, thou art fallen far. I had not yesterday said so surely, but I know to-day, grief by grief, sin by sin. A crown? By a crown. Ay, mock me. Now I know more than I knew. Now I know thou art fallen below hope, or final reascent. Because? Because a spirit who expected to see God, though at the last point of a million years, could dare no mockery of a ruined man such as this Adam. Who is high and bold, be it said passing, of a good red clay discovered on some top of Lebanon, or haply of Aeonus, beyond sweep of the black eagle's wing. A furlong lower had made a meeker king for Eden. So, it is not possible by sin and grief, to give the things your name, that spirits should rise instead of falling? Most impossible. The highest being, the holy and the glad, whoever rises must approach delight and sanctity in the act. Ha! My clay king, thou wilt not rule by wisdom very long the after generations. Earth, methinks, will disinherit thy philosophy for a new doctrine, suited to thine heirs, 
and class these present dogmas with the rest of the old world traditions, Eden fruits and Saurian fossils. Speak no more with him, beloved. It is not good to speak with him. Go from us, Lucifer, and speak no more. We have no pardon which thou dost not scorn, nor any bliss thou seest for coveting, nor innocence for staining. Being bereft, we would be alone. Go. Ah! Ye talk the same, all of you, spirits and clay. Go and depart. In heaven they said so, and at Eden's gate, and here, reiterant in the wilderness. None saith, Stay with me, for thy face is fair. None saith, Stay with me, for thy voice is sweet. And yet I was not fashioned out of clay. Look on me, woman. Am I beautiful? Thou hast a glorious darkness. Nothing more? I think no more. False heart, thou thinkest more. Thou canst not choose but think, as I praise God, unwillingly, but fully, that I stand most absolute in beauty. As yourselves were fashioned very good at best, so we sprang very beauteous from the creant word which thrilled behind us, God himself being moved when that august work of a perfect shape, his dignities of sovereign angelhood, swept out into the universe, divine with thunderous movements, earnest looks of gods, and silver-solemn clash of cymbal wings, whereof was I, in motion and in form, a part not poorest. And yet, yet perhaps this beauty which I speak of is not here, as God's voice is not here, nor even my crown, I do not know. What is this thought or thing which I call beauty? Is it thought or thing? Is it a thought accepted for a thing, or both, or neither? A pretext? A word? Its meaning flutters in me like a flame under my own breath. My perceptions reel forevermore around it, and fall off as if it too were holy. Which it is. The essence of all beauty I call love. The attribute the evidence and the end, the consummation to the inward sense, of beauty apprehended from without, I still call love, as form when colorless is nothing to the eye, that pine tree there, without its black and green being all blank, so without love is beauty undiscerned, in man or angel, angel, rather ask what love is in thee, what love moves to thee, and what collateral love moves on with thee? Then shall thou know if thou art beautiful. Love. What is love? I lose it. Beauty and love. I darken to the image. Beauty. Love. He fades away while a low music sounds. Thou art pale, Eve. The precipice of ill down this colossal nature dizzies me. And hark! The starry harmony remote seems measuring the heights from whence he fell. That that we have not fallen so, by the hope and aspiration, by the love and faith, we do exceed the stretcher of this angel. Happier we than he is, by the death. Or rather by the life of the Lord God. How dim the angel grows, as if that blast of music swept him back into the dark. The music is stronger gathering itself into uncertain articulation. It throbs in on us like a plaintive art, pressing with slow pulsations vibrative, its gradual sweetness through the yielding air, to such expressions as the stars may use, no starry sweet and strange, with every note that grows more loud, the angel grows more dim, receding in proportion to approach, until he stand afar, a shade. Now, words. Song of the Morning Star to Lucifer. He falls utterly away and vanishes as it proceeds. Mine orbed image sinks back from thee, back from thee, as thou art fallen, methinks, back from me, back from me. O oh, my light bearer, could another fairer lack to thee, lack to thee? Ah! Ah, here's for us. I loved thee with the fiery love of stars, who love by burning and by loving move, too near the throned Jehovah not to love. Ah, 
ah, here's for us. Their brows flash fast on me from gliding cars, pale passioned for my loss. Ah, ah, here's for us. Mine orbed heats drop cold, down from thee, down from thee. As fell thy grace of old, down from me, down from me. O oh, my light bearer, is another fairer, one to thee, one to thee. Ah, ah, here's for us, great love preceded loss, known to thee, known to thee. Ah, ah, thou, breathing thy communicable grace, of life into my light, mine astral faces from thine angel face hast inly fed and flooded me with radiance over much from thy pure height ah ah thou with calm floating pinions both ways spread erect irradiated didst sting my wheel of glory on on before thee along the godlight by a quickening touch ha ha Around, around the firmamental ocean, I swam, expanding with delirious fire. Around, around, around in blind desire, to be drawn upward to the infinite. Ha, ha! Until, the motion flinging out the motion, to a keen whirl of passion and avidity, to a dim whirl of languor and delight, I wound in gyrant orbit, smooth and white, with that intense rapidity. Around, around, I wound and interwound, while all the cyclic heavens about me spun. Stars, planets, suns, and moons dilated broad, then flashed together into a single sun, and wound and wound in one. And as they wound, I wound, around, around, in a great fire I almost took for God. Ha, ha, Heosphoros! Thine angel glory sinks, down from me down from me my beauty falls methinks down from thee down from thee o oh, my light bearer o oh, my path preparer gone from me gone from me ah ah here's for us i cannot kindle underneath the brow of this new angel here who is not thou all things are altered since that time ago and if i shine at eve i shall not know i am strange I am slow. Ah, ah, here's for us. Henceforward, human eyes of lovers shall be the only sweetest sight that I shall see, with tears between the looks raised up to me. Ah, ah, when, having wept all night, at break of day, above the folded hills they shall survey my light, a little trembling in the grey. Ah, ah, and gazing on me, such shall comprehend, through all my piteous pomp, at morn or even, and melancholy leaning out of heaven, that love, their own divine, may change or end, that love may close in loss. Ah, ah, here's for us. End of scene two. Drama of Exile by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Drama of Exile. Scene 3. Part 1. Scene. Farther on, a wild open country, seen vaguely in the approaching night. How doth the wide and melancholy earth gather her hills around us, gray and ghast? The stare with blank significance of loss right in our faces. Is the wind up? Nay. And yet the cedars and the junipers rock slowly through the midst, without a sound, and shapes which have no certainty of shape, drift duskly in and out between the pines, and loom along the edges or the hills, and lie flat, curdling in the open ground, shadows without a body, which contract and lengthen as we gaze on them. O oh, life which is not man's nor angel's, what is this? No cause for fear. The circle of God's life contains all life beside. I think the earth is crazed with curse, and wanders from the sense of those first laws of fixed to form and space, or ever she knew sin. We will not rear. We were brave sinning. Yea, I pluck the fruit with eyes upturned to heaven, and seeing there are God thrones, as the tempter said, not God. My heart, which beat then, sinks, 
The sun hath sunk out of sight with our Eden. Night is near. And God's curse nearest. Let us travel back and stand within the sword glare till we die, believing it is better to meet death than suffer desolation. Nay, beloved, we must not pluck death from the Maker's hand. As erst we plucked the apple, we must wait until he gives death as he gave us life. Nor murmur faintly over the primal gift, because we spoilt its sweetness with our sin. Ay, ay, dost thou discern what I behold? I see all, how the spirits in thine eyes, from their dilated orbits, bound before to meet the spectral dread. I am afraid. Ay, ay, the twilight bristles wild with shapes of intermittent motion, aspect vague and mystic bearings, which o'ercreep the earth, keeping slow time with horrors in the blood. How near they reach, and far, how gray they move, treading upon the darkness without feet, and fluttering on the darkness without wings. Some run like dogs, with noses to the ground. Some keep one path, like sheep. Some rock, like trees. Some glide, like a fallen leaf. And some flow on copious as rivers. Some spring up like fire, and some coil. Ay, ay, dost thou pause to say, like what? Coil like the serpent, when he fell from all the emerald splendor of his height and writhed, and could not climb against the curse, not a ring's length. I am afraid, afraid, I think, it is God's will to make me afraid, permitting these to haunt us in the place of his beloved angels, gone from us, because we are not pure. Dear pity of God! that didst permit the angels to go home and live no more with us who are not pure. Save us, too, from a loathly company, almost as loathly in our eyes, perhaps, as we are in the purest. Pity us, us, too, nor shut us in the dark, away from verity and from stability, or what we name such through the precedence of earth's adjusted uses. Leave us not to doubt betwixt our senses and our souls, which are the more distraught and full of pain, and weak of apprehension. Courage sweet, the mystic shapes ebb back from us, and drop with slow concentric movement, each on each, expressing wider spaces, and collapsed in lines more definite for imagery. Arid, clear for relation, till the throng of shapeless spectra merge into a few distinguishable phantasms, vague and grand, which sweep out and around us vastly, and hold us in a circle of a calm. Strange phantasms of pale shadow, there are twelve. Thou who didst name all lives, hast names for these. Methinks this is a zodiac of the earth, which round us with a visionary dread, responding with twelve shadowy signs of earth in fantastic apposition and approach to those celestial, consolated twelve, which palpitate adown the silent nights, under the pressure of the hand of God, stretched wide in benediction at this hour. Not a star pricketh the flat gloom of heaven, but, girding close to our nether wilderness, the zodiac figures of the earth loom slow, drawn out as suiteth with the place and time, in twelve colossal shades instead of stars through which the ecliptic line of mystery strikes bleakly with an unrelenting scope, foreshadowing life and death. By dream or sense, do we see this? Our spirits have climbed high by reason of the passion of our grief, and from the top of sense looked over sense to the significance and heart of thing, rather than things themselves. And the dim twelve our dim exponents of the creature life, as earth contains it, gaze on them, beloved, by stricter apprehension of the sight, suggestions of the creature shall assuage, the terror of the shadows, what is known subduing the unknown and taming it, from all prodigious dread. That phantasm there presents a lion, albeit twenty times as large as any lion, with a roar set soundless in his vibratory jaws, and a strange horror stirring in his mane. And there a pedulous shadow seems to weigh good against ill, perchance. And there a crab 
puts coldly out its gradual shadow claws, like a slow blot that spreads till all the ground crawled over by it seems to crawl itself. A bull stands horned here with gibbous blooms, and a ram likewise, and a scorpion rise its tail in ghastly slime and stings the dark. This way a goat leaps with a wild blank of beard, and here fantastic fishes duskly float, using the calm for waters, while their fins throb out quick rhythms along the shallow air, while images more human. How he stands, that phantasm of a man who is not thou, two phantasms of two men. One that sustains, and one that strives, resuming, so the ends of manhood's curse of labor dost thou see the phantasm of a woman. I have seen. But look off to those small humanities which draw me tenderly across my fear, lesser and fainter than my womanhood, or yet thy manhood, with strange innocence set in the misty lines of head and hand, they lean together. I would gaze on them longer and longer till my watching eyes, as the stars do in watching anything, should light them forward from their outline to clear configuration. Two spirits, of organic and inorganic nature, arise from the ground. But what shapes rise up between us in the open space, and thrust me into horror back from hope? Colossal shapes, twin sovereign images, with a disconsolate blank majesty, set in their wondrous faces, with no look, and yet an aspect a significance of individual life and passionate ends which overcomes us gazing. O bleak sound, O shadow of a sound, O phantasm of thin sound, how it comes wheeling as the pale moth wheels, wheeling and wheeling in continuous wail around the cyclic zodiac, and gains force, and gathers, settling coldly like a moth, on the wan faces of these images we see before us, whereby modified it draws a straight line of articulate song from out that spiral faintness of lament, and by one voice expresses many griefs. I am the spirit of the harmless earth. God spake me softly out among the stars, as softly as a blessing of much worth. And then his smile did follow unawares, that all things fashioned so for use and duty might shine anointed with his chrism of beauty. Yet I wail. I drave on with words exultingly, obliquely down the godlight's gradual fall, individual aspect and complexity of guratory orb and interval, lost in the fluent motion of delight toward the high ends of being beyond sight. Yet I wail. I am the spirit of the harmless beasts of flying things and creeping things and swimming, of all the lives ere set at silent feasts that found the love-kiss on the goblet brimming, and tasted in each drop within the measure the sweetest pleasure of their lord's good pleasure. Yet I wail! What a full hum of life around his lips bore witness to the fullness of creation! How all the grand words were full laid in ships, each sailing onward from enunciation to separate existence, and each bearing the creature's power of joying, hoping, fearing, yet I wail. They wail, beloved, they speak of glory in God, and they wail, wail, that burden of the song drops from it like its fruit, and heavily falls into the lap of silence. Hark again. I was so beautiful, so beautiful. My joy stood up within me, bold to add a word to God's, and when his work was full, to very good responded very glad. Filtered through roses did the light enclose me, and bunches of the grapes swam blue across me, yet I wail. I bounded with my panthers. I rejoiced in my young tumbling lions rolled together, my stag, the river at his fetlocks, poised, then dipped his antlers through the golden weather in the same ripple which the alligator left in his joyous troubling of the water. Yet I wail! O oh, my deep waters, cataract and flood, what wordless triumph did your voices render! O oh, mountain summits, where the eagle stood and shook from head and wing thick dews of splendor! How with holy quiet did your earthy accept that heavenly, knowing ye were worthy! Yet I wail! 
Oh, my wild wood dogs with your listening eyes, my horses, my ground eagles for swift fleeing, my birds with viewless wings of harmonies, my calm cold fishes of a silver being, how happy were ye! Living and possessing, O、oh, fair half souls, capacious of full blessing, yet I wail. I wail, I wail. Now hear my charge to day, thou man, thou woman, marked as the misdoers by God's sword at your backs. I lent my clay to make your bodies, which had grown more flowers, and now, in change for what I lent, ye give me the thorn to vex, the tempest fire to cleave me, and I wail. I wail, I wail. Behold ye that I fasten my sorrows, fang upon your souls dishonored. Accursed transgressors, down the steep ye hasten. Your crowns wait on the world to drag it downward unto your ruin. Lo, my lions, scenting the blood of wars, roar hoarse and unrelenting, and I wail. I wail, I wail. Do you hear that I wail? I had no part in your transgression, none. My roses on the bough did bud not pale. My rivers did not loiter in the sun. I was obedient. Wherefore, in my centre, do I thrill at this curse of death and winter? Do I wail? I wail, I wail, I wail in the assault of undeserved perdition. Sorely wounded, my nightingale sang sweet without a fault. My gentle leopards innocently bounded. We were obedient. What is this convulses our blameless life with pangs and fever pulses? And I wail. I choose God's thunder. And his angel swords to die by Adam, rather than such words. Let us pass out and flee. We cannot flee. This zodiac of the creature's cruelty curls round us like a river, cold and drear, and shuts us in, constraining us to hear. Feel your steps, O wandering sinners! Strike a sense of death to me, and undug graves. The heart of earth, once calm, is trembling like the ragged foam along the ocean waves. The restless earthquakes rock against each other. The elements moan round me, mother, mother, and I wail. Your melancholy looks do pierce me through. Corruption swathes the paleness of your beauty. Why have ye done this thing? What did we do that we should fall from bliss as ye from duty? Wild shriek the hawks in waiting for their jesses. Fierce howl the wolves along the wildernesses, and I wail. To thee, the spirit of the harmless earth. To thee, the spirit of earth's harmless lives. Inferior creatures, but still innocent, be salutation from a guilty mouth, yet worthy of some audience and respect from you who are not guilty. If we have sinned, God hath rebuked us. Who is over us to give rebuke or death? And if ye wail because of any suffering from our sin, ye who are under and not over us. Be satisfied with God, if not with us, and pass out from our presence in such peace as we have left you to enjoy revenge, such as the heavens have made you. Verily, there must be strife between us, large as sin. No strife, mine Adam. Let us not stand high upon a wrong we did to reach disdain. Who rather should be humbler evermore, since self made sadder, Adam? Shall I speak? I who spake once to such a bitter end, shall I speak humbly now? Who once was proud, I, schooled by sin to more humility than thou hast. O my Adam, O my King, my King, if not the world, speak as thou wilt. Thus then, my hand in thine, sweet, dreadful spirits, I pray you humbly in the name of God, not to say of these tears. Which are impure, grant me such pardoning grace as can go forth from clean volitions, toward a spotted will, from the wronged to the wronger. This and no more. I do not ask more. I am aware, indeed, that absolute pardon is impossible from you to me, by reason of my sin, and that I cannot ever more, as once with worthy acceptation of pure joy. Behold the trances of the holy hills beneath the leaning stars, or watch the vales, dew pallid with their morning ecstasy, 
or hear the winds make pastoral peace between two grassy uplands and the river wells work out their bubbling mysteries underground and all the birds sing till for joy of song they lift their trembling wings as if to heave the too much weight of music from their heart and float it up with tether i am aware that these things i can no more apprehend with a pure organ into a full delight the sense of beauty and of melody being no more aided in me by the sense of personal adjustment to those heights of what i see well formed or hear well tuned but rather coupled darkly and made ashamed by my percipiency of sin and fall and melancholy of humiliant thoughts but o oh, fair dreadful spirits albeit this your accusation must confront my soul and your pathetic utterance and full gaze must evermore subdue me be content conquer me gently as if pitying me not to say loving let my tears fall thick as watering dews of eden unreproached and when your tongues reprove me make me smooth not ruffled smooth and still with your reproof and peradventure better while more sad for look to it sweet spirits look well to it it will not be amiss in you who kept the law of your own righteousness and keep the right of your own griefs to mourn themselves to pity me twice fallen from that and this from joy of place and also right of wail i wail being not for me only i sin look to it o oh, sweet spirits for was i not at that last sunset seen in paradise when all the westering clouds flashed out of sudden angel faces face by face all hushed and solemn as a thought of god held them suspended was i not that hour the lady of the world princess of life mistress of feast and favour could i touch a rose with my white hand but it became redder at once could i walk leisurely along our sported garden but the grass tracked me with greenness could i stand aside a moment underneath a cornel tree but all the leaves did tremble as alive with songs of fifty birds who were made glad because i stood there could i turn to look with these twain eyes of mine now weeping fast now good for only weeping upon man angel or beast or bird but each rejoiced because i looked on him alas alas and is not this much woe to cry alas speaking of joy and is not this more shame to have made the woe myself from all that joy to have stretched my hand and plucked it from the tree and chosen it for fruit nay is not this still most despair to have halved that bitter fruit and ruined so the sweetest friend i have turning the greatest to mine enemy i will not hear thee speak so hearken spirits our god who is the enemy of none but only of their sin has set your hope and my hope in a promise on this head show reverence then and never bruise her more with unpermitted and extreme reproach less passionate in anguish she fling down between your trampling feet god's gift to us a sovereignty by reason and free will sinning against the province of the soul to rule the soulless reverence her estate and pass out from her presence with no words o oh, dearest heart have patience with my heart o oh, spirits have patience stead of reverence and let me speak for not being innocent it little doth become me to be proud and i am prescient by the very hope and promise set upon me that henceforth only my gentleness shall make me great my humbleness exalt me awful spirits by witness that i stand in your reproof but one sun's length off from my happiness happy as i have said to look around clear to look up and now i need not speak ye see me what i am ye scorn me so 
because ye see me what I have made myself from God's best making. Alas, peace foregone, love wronged, and virtue forfeit, and tears wept upon all vainly. Alas, me, alas, who have undone myself from all that best, fairest and sweetest, to this wretchedness, saddest and most defiled. Cast down, cast down, what word meets absolute loss? Let absolute loss suffice you for revenge. For I, who lived beneath the wings of angels yesterday, wandered to-day beneath the roofless world, I, reigning the earth's empress yesterday, put off from me to-day your hate with prayers. I, yesterday, who answered the Lord God, composed and glad, as singing birds the sun, might shriek now from our dismal desert. God, and hear him make reply, what is thy need, thou whom I cursed to-day? Eve. I, at last, who yesterday was helpmate and delight unto mine Adam, am to-day the grief and curse meet for him, and so pity us, ye gentle spirits, and pardon him and me, and let some tender peace made of our pain grow up betwixt us, as a tree might grow, with boughs on both sides, in the shade of which, when presently ye shall behold us dead, for the poor sake of our humility, breathe out your pardon on our breathless lips, and drop your twilight dews against our brows, and stroking with mild airs our harmless hands, left empty of all fruit, perceive your love distilling through your pity over us, and suffer it, self-reconciled, to pass. End of Scene 3 A Drama of Exile by Elizabeth Barrett Browning This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Drama of Exile Scene 3 Part 2 Lucifer Rises in the Circle who talks here of a compliment of grief, Of expiation wrought by loss and fall, Of hate subduable to pity? Eve, take counsel from thy counsellor, the snake, And boast no more in grief, Nor hope from pain, my docile Eve. I teach you to despond, who taught you disobedience. Look around. Earth spirits and phantasms hear you talk, unmoved, as if you were red clay again and talked. What are your words to them, your grief to them, your deaths indeed to them? Did the hand pause for their sake in the plucking of the fruit, that they should pause for you in hating you? Or will your grief or death, as did your sin, bring change upon their final doom? Behold, your grief is but your sin in the rebound, and cannot expiate for it. That is true. I. That is true. The clay king testifies to the snake's counsel. Hear him. Very true. I wail, I wail. And certes, that is true. Ye wail, ye all wail. Peradventure I could wail among you. O thou universe, that holdest sin and woe, more room for wail. Ah, ah, heals for us, heals for us. Mark, Lucifer, he changes awfully. It seems as if he looked from grief to God and could not see him. Wretched Lucifer. How he stands yet an angel. We all wail. Dost thou remember, Adam, when the curse took us in Eden, on a mountain peak half sheathed in primal woods, and glittering in spasms of awful sunshine, at that hour a lion couched, part raised upon his paws, with his calm massive face turned full on thine and his mane listening. When the ended curse left silence in the world, right suddenly he sprang up rampant, and stood straight and stiff, as if the new reality of death were dashed against his eyes, and roared so fierce, such thick carnivorous passion in his throat, tearing a passage through the wrath and fear, and roared so wild, and smote from all the hills such fast keen echoes, 
crumbling down the vales precipitately, that the forest beasts, one after one, did mutter a response of savage and of sorrowful complaint, which trailed along the gorges. Then, at once, he fell back and rolled crashing from the height into the dusk of pines. It might have been. I heard the curse alone. I wail, I wail. That lion is the type of what I am. And as he fixed thee with his full-faced hate, and roared, O oh Adam, comprehending doom, so, gazing on the face of the unseen, I cry out here between the heavens and earth, my conscience of this sin, this woe, this wrath, which damn me to this depth. I wail, I wail. I wail, O oh God. I scorn you that ye wail who use your pretty griefs for pedestals to stand on, beckoning pity from without, and deal in pathos of antithesis of what ye were, forsooth, and what ye are. I scorn you like an angel, yet one cry I too would drive up like a column erect, marble to marble, from my heart to heaven, a monument of anguish, to transpierce and overtop your vapory complaints, expressed from feeble woes. I wail, I wail. For, O oh ye heavens, ye are my witnesses that I, struck out from nature in a blot, the outcast and the mildew of things good, the leper of angels, the accepted dust under the common rain of daily gifts, I the snake, I the tempter, I the cursed, to whom the highest and the lowest alike say, Go from us, we have no need of thee, was made by God like others. Good and fair he did create me. Ask him, if not fair. Ask if I caught not fair and silverly his blessing for chief angels on my head, until it grew there a crown crystallized. Ask if he never called me by my name, Lucifer, kindly said as Gabriel, Lucifer, soft as Michael, while serene I, standing in the glory of the lamps, answered, my father, innocent of shame and of the sense of thunder. Ha! Ye think, white angels in your niches, I repent, and would tread down my own offences back to service at the footstool? That's red wrong. I cry as the beast did, that I may cry, expansive, not appealing. Fallen so deep, against the sides of this prodigious pit, I cry, cry, dashing out the hands of wail on each side to meet anguish everywhere, and to attest it in the ecstasy and exultation of a woe sustained because provoked and chosen. Pass along your wilderness, vain mortals. Puny griefs in transitory shapes be henceforth dwarfed to your own conscience by the dread extremes of what I am and have been. If ye have fallen, it is but a step's fall, the whole ground beneath strewn, woolly, soft with promise. If ye have sinned, your prayers tread high as angels. If ye have grieved, ye are too mortal to be pitiable. The power to die disproves the right to grieve. Go to. Ye call this ruin? I half scorn the ill I did you. Were ye wronged by me, hated and tempted and undone of me? Still, what's your hurt to mine of doing hurt, of hating, tempting, and so ruining? The sword's hilt is the sharpest, and cuts through the hand that wields it. Go! I curse you all. Hate one another, feebly, as ye can. I would not certes cut you short in hate, far be it from me. Hate on as ye can. I breathe into your faces, spirits of earth, as wintry blast may breathe on wintry leaves, and lifting up their brownness, show beneath the branches bare. Beseech you, spirits, give to Eve, who beggarly entreats your love, for her and Adam when they shall be dead, an answer rather fitting to the sin than to the sorrow, as the heavens, I trow, for justice' sake gave theirs. I curse you both, Adam and Eve, Say grace as after meat after my curses. May your tears fall hot on all the hissing scorns of the creatures here, and yet rejoice. 
Increase and multiply, ye in your generations, in all plagues, corruptions, melancholies, poverties, and hideous forms of life, and fears of death, the thought of death being alway eminent, immovable and dreadful in your life, and deafly and dumbly insignificant of any hope beyond, as death itself, whichever of you lieth dead the first, shall seem to the survivor, yet rejoice. My curse catch at you strongly, body and soul, and he find no redemption, nor the wing of seraph move your way, and yet rejoice. Rejoice, because ye have not set in you this hate which shall pursue you, this fire-hate which glares without because it burns within, which kills from ashes, this potential hate, wherein I, angel, in antagonism to God and his reflex beatitudes, moan ever in the central universe with the great woe of striving against love, and gasp for space amid the infinite, and toss for rest amid the desertness, self-orphaned by my will, and self-elect to kingship of resistant agony towards the good round me, hating good and love, and willing to hate good, and to hate love, and willing to will on so evermore, scorning the past and damning the to come. Go and rejoice. I curse you. Lucifer vanishes. And we scorn you. There's no pardon which can lean you to a right when your bodies take the warden of the death curse in our sight. Then the bee that hummeth lowest shall transcend you. Then ye shall not move an eyelid, though the stars look down your eyes, and the earth which ye defiled shall expose you to the skies. Lo, these kings of ours who sought to comprehend you. And the elements shall boldly all your dust to dust constrain. Unresistedly and coldly I will smite you with my rain. From the slowest of my frosts is no receding. And my little worm appointed to assume a royal part, he shall reign crowned and anointed o'er the noble human heart. Give him counsel against losing of that Eden. Do ye scorn us? Back your scorn, toward your faces gray and lorn. As the wind drives back the rain, thus I drive with passion strife. I who stand beneath God's sun, made like God, and though undone, not unmade for love and life, lo. Ye utter threats in vain. By my free will that chose sin, By mine agony within, Round the passage of the fire, By the pinings which disclose That my native soul is higher Than what it chose. We are yet too high, O spirits, For your disdain. Nay, beloved, if these be low, We confront them from no height. We have stooped down to their level By infecting them with evil. And their scorn that meets our blows gaze aright. Amen. Let it be so. We shall triumph, triumph greatly when ye lie beneath the sward. There our lily shall grow stately, though ye answer not a word, and her fragrance shall be scornful of your silence. While your throne ascending calmly, we in heirdom of your soul. Flash the river, lift the palm tree, the dilated ocean roll, by the thoughts that throbbed within you round the islands. Alp and torrent shall inherit your significance of will, and the grandeur of your spirit shall our broad savannas fill. In our winds your exultations shall be springing. Even your parlance which inveigles by our rudeness shall be won, Hearts poetic in our eagles shall beat up against the sun, and strike downward in articulate clear singing. Your bold speeches our behemoth with his thunderous jaw shall wield. Your high fancies shall our mammoth breathe sublimely up the shield. Of St. Michael at God's throne who waits to speed him, till the heaven's smooth-grooved thunder spinning back shall leave them clear and the angels smiling wonder with dropped looks from sphere to sphere shall cry ho ye heirs of adam ye exceed him 
Root out thine eyes, sweet, from the dreary ground. Beloved, we may be overcome by God, but not by these. By God, perhaps, in these. I think not so. Had God foredoomed despair, he had not spoken hope. He may destroy Certus, but not deceive. Behold this rose. I plucked it in our bower of paradise this morning as I went forth, and my heart has beat against its petals all the day. I thought it would be always red and full as when I plucked it. Is it? Ye may see. I cast it down to you that ye may see, all of you. Count the petals host of it, and note the colors painted. Ye may see, and I am as it is who yesterday grew in the same place. O oh, ye spirits of earth, I almost from my miserable heart could here upbraid you for your cruel heart, which will not let me down the slope of death, draw any of your pity after me, or lie still in the quiet of your looks as my flower there in mine. A bleak wind, quickened with indistinct human voices, spins around the earth zodiac, filling the circle with its presence and then wailing off into the east, carries the rose away with it. Eve falls upon her face. Adam stands erect. So verily the last departs. So memory follows hope and life both. Love said to me, Do not die. And I replied, O oh, love, I will not die. I exiled, and I will not often love. But now it is no choice of mine to die. My heart throbs from me. Call it straightway back. Death's consummation crowns completed life, or comes too early. Hope being set on thee for others. If for others, then for thee, for thee and me. The wind revolves from the east, and round again to the east, perfumed by the Eden rose, and full of voices which sweep out into articulation as they pass. Let thy soul shake its leaves to feel the mystic wind. Hark. I hear life. I relive, I relive, and the source that we receive is a warmth and a new, which we softly bud into from the heart and from the brain, something strange that overmatches of the sound and of the sight, playing round in trickling patches, with my sorrow and delight. Yet is it all in vain, walk softly, lest it all be in vain. All we live, all we live, and this life that we achieve is a loud thing and a bold, which with pulses manifold strikes the heart out full and fail, active doer, noble liver, strong to struggle, sure to conquer, though the vessel's prow will quiver at the lifting of the anchor. Yet do we strive in vain? Walk softly, lest it all be in vain. Oh, we live, oh, we live, and this life that we conceive is a clear thing and a fair, which we set in crystal air, that its beauty may be plain, with a breathing and a flooding of the heaven life on the whole, while we hear the forests budding to the music of the soul. Yet is it tuned in vain? Walk softly, lest it all be in vain. Oh, we live, oh, we live, and this life that we perceive is a great thing, and a grave, which for others' use we have duty-laden to remain. We are helpers, fellow creatures of the right against the wrong. We are earnest-hearted teachers of the truth which maketh strong. Yet do we teach in vain? Rock us off, Lest it all be Oh, we live, oh, we live, and this life that we reprieve is a low thing and a light, which is jested out of sight, and made worthy of disdain. Strike with bold electric laughter the high tops of things divine. Turn thy head, my brother, after, lest thy tears fall in my wine, for all is laughed in vain. Walk us off, lest it all be mine. I hear a sound of life, of life like ours, of laughter and of wailing, of grave speech, of little plaintive voices innocent, 
of life in separate courses flowing out like our four rivers to some outward main i hear life life and so thy cheeks have snatched scarlet paleness and thine eyes drink fast of glory from full cups and thy moist lips seem trembling both of them with earnest doubts whether to utter words or only smile shall i be mother of the coming life hear the steep generations how they fall adown the visionary stairs of time like supernatural thunders far yet near sowing their fiery echoes through the hills am i a cloud to these mother to these and bringer of the curse upon all these eve sinks down again o oh, we live o oh, we live and this life that we conceive is a noble thing and high which we climb up loftily to view god without a stain till recoiling where the shade is we retread our steps again and descend the gloomy hades to resume man's mortal pain shall it be climbed in vain Walk softly, lest it all be in vain. Oh, we live, oh, we live, and this life we would retrieve is a faithful thing of heart which we love in, heart to heart, until one heart fitteth twain. Wilt thou be one with me? I will be one with thee. Ha, <laughs> ha, we love and live. Alas, ye love and die. Shriek, who shall reply? For is it not loved in vain? Walk softly, lest it all be in Oh, we live, oh, we live, and this life we would survive is a gloomy thing and brief, which consummated in grief leaveth ashes all for gain. Is it not all in vain? Walk softly, lest it all be in And bringer of the curse upon all these. The voices of fortune humanity die off. So let me die. So let us die, when God's will soundeth the right hour of death. And bringer of the curse upon all these. O oh, spirits, by the gentleness ye use in winds at night, and floating clouds at noon, in gliding waters under lily leaves, in chirp of crickets, and the settling hush a bird makes in her nest with feet and wings. Fulfill your natures now. Agreed, aloud, we gather out our natures like a cloud, and thus fulfill their lightnings, thus and thus. Hearken, O oh, hearken to us. As the storm wind blows bleakly from the Norland, as the snow wind beats blindly on the moorland, as the simoom drives hot across the desert, as the thunder roars deep in the unmeasured, as the torrent tears the ocean world to atoms, as the whirlpool grinds it fathoms below fathoms, thus and thus. As the yellow toad that spits its poison chilly, as the tiger in the jungle crouching stilly, as the wild boar with ragged tusks of anger, as the wolf-dog with teeth of glittering clangor, as the vultures that scream against the thunder, as the owlets that sit and moan asunder, thus and thus. Adam, God, cruel, unrelenting spirits, by the power in me of the sovereign soul, whose thought keep pace yet with the angel's march, I charge you into silence, trample you down to obedience. I am king of you. Ha ha, thou art king, with a sin for a crown and a soul undone, thou the antagonized, tortured and agonized, held in the ring of the zodiac. Now, king, beware, we are many and strong, whom thou standest among, and we press on the air and we stifle thee back, and we multiply where thou wouldst trample us down from rights of our own to an utter wrong, and from under the feet of thy scorn, O oh, forlorn, we shall spring up like corn, and our stubble be strong. God, there is power in thee, 
I make appeal unto thy kingship. There is pity in thee, O sinned against great God. My seed, my seed, there is hope set on thee. I cry to thee, thou mystic seed that shalt be. Leave us not in agony beyond what we can bear. Fallen in debasement below thunder mark, a mark for scorning. Taunted and perplexed by all these creatures we ruled yesterday, whom thou, Lord, rulest always. O oh, my seed, through the tempestuous years that reign so thick betwixt my ghostly vision and thy face, let me have token, for my soul is bruised before the serpent's head is. A vision of Christ appears in the midst of the zodiac, which pales before the heavenly light. The earth's spirits grow grayer and fainter. I am here. This is God. Curse us not, God, any more. But gazing so, so, with omnific eyes, lift my soul upward till it touch thy feet, or lift it only, not to seem too proud, to the low height of some good angel's feet, for such to tread on when he walketh straight, and thy lips praise him. Spirits of the earth, I meet you with rebuke for the reproach, and cruel and unmitigated blame ye cast upon the old masters. True they have sinned, and true their sin is reckoned into loss, for you, the sinless, yet your innocence. Which of you praises, since God made your acts inherent in your lives, and bound your hands with instincts and imperious sanctities from self-defacement, which of you disdains these sinners, who in falling proved their height above you, by their liberty to fall? And which of you complains of loss by them, for whose delight and use ye have your life and honour in creation? Ponder it. This regent and sublime humanity, though fallen, exceeds you. This shall film your sun, shall hunt your lightning to its lair of cloud. Turn back your rivers, footpath all your seas, lay flat your forests, master with a look, your lion at his fasting, and fetch down your eagle flying. Nay, without this law of mandom, ye would perish, beast by beast, devouring tree by tree, with strangling roots and trunks set tuskwise. Yea, would gaze on God with imperceptive blankness up to the stars, and mutter, Why, God, hast thou made us thus? And pining to a sallow idiocy, stagger up blindly against the ends of life, then stagnate into rottenness and drop, heavily, poor, dead matter, piecemeal down, the abysmal spaces, like a little stone, let fall to chaos, therefore over you. Receive man's sceptre, therefore be content to minister with voluntary grace, and melancholy pardon every right and function in you, to the human hand. But yea, to man, as angels are to God, servants in pleasure, singers of delight, suggestors to his soul of higher things than any of your highest, so at last he shall look around on you with lids too straight to hold the grateful tears and thank you well and bless you when he prays his secret prayer and praise you when he sings his open songs for the clear song note he has learnt in you of purifying sweetness and extend across your head his golden fantasies which glorify you into soul from sense go serve him for such price that not in vain nor yet ignobly ye shall serve. I place my word here for an oath, mine oath for act, to be hereafter, in the name of which perfect redemption and perpetual grace, I bless you through the hope and through the peace which are mine, to the love which is myself. Speak on still, Christ, albeit thou bless me not. In set words I am blessed in hearkening thee, Speak, Christ. Speak, Adam. Bless the woman, man. It's thine office. Mother of the world, take heart before this presence. Lo, my voice, which naming erst the creatures, did express, God breathing through my breath, the attributes and instincts of each creature and its name, floats to the same affiatus, 
floats and heaves like water weed that opens to a wave, a full-leaved prophecy affecting thee, out fairly and wide, henceforward arise, aspire to the calms and magnanities and lofty uses of the noble ends, the sanctified devotion and full work to which thou art elect for evermore. First woman, wife, and mother. And first in sin. And also the soul-bearer of the seed, whereby sin dieth, raise the majesties of thy disconsolate brows, O well-beloved, and front with level eyelids the two come, and all the dark of the world, rise, woman, arise, to thy peculiar and best altitudes, of doing good, and of enduring ill, of comforting for ill and teaching good, and reconciling all that ill and good unto the patience of a constant hope. Rise with thy daughters, if sin came by thee, and by sin death, the ransom righteousness, the heavenly life and compensate of rest, shall come by means of thee. If woe by thee had issued to the world, thou shalt go forth an angel of the woe thou didst achieve found acceptable to the world instead of others of that name, of whose bright steps thy deeds stripped bear the hills, be satisfied something thou hast to bear, through womanhood, peculiar suffering answer to the sin, some pang laid down for each new human life, some weariness in guarding such a life, some coldness from the guarded, some mistrust from those thou hast too well served, from those beloved too loyally for some reason, feebleness within thy heart, and cruelty without, and pressure of an alien tyranny with its dynastic reason of larger bones and stronger sinews. But go to thy love, shall chant itself in its own beatitudes, after its own life-working. A child's kiss set on thy sighing lips shall make thee glad. A poor man served by thee shall make thee rich. A sick man helped by thee shall make thee strong. Thou shalt be served thyself by every sense of service which thou renderest. Such a crown I set upon thy head, Christ witnessing with looks of prompting love, to keep thee clear of all reproach against the sin foregone from all the generations which succeed. Thy hand which plucked the apple I clasped closed, thy lips which spake wrong counsel I kiss close, I bless thee in the name of paradise, and by the memory of Edenic joys, forfeit and lost, by that last cypress tree, green at the gate, which thrilled as we came out, and by the blessed nightingale, which threw its melancholy music after us, and by the flowers, whose spirits full of smells did follow softly, plucking us behind, back to the gradual banks and vernal bowers, and fourfold rivers' courses. And all these, I bless thee, to the contraries of these, I bless thee to the desert and the thorns, to the elemental change and turbulence, and to the roar of the estranged beasts, and to the solemn dignities of grief. To each one of these ends, and to their end of death, and the hereafter. I accept for me and for my daughters this high part, which lowly shall be counted. Noble work shall hold me in the place of God and rest, and in the place of Eden's lost delight, were the endurance of permitted pain, while on my longest patience there shall wait death's speechless angel smiling in the east, whence cometh the cold wind. I bow myself humbly henceforward on the ill I did, that humbleness may keep it in the shade. Shall it be so? Shall I smile saying so? O seed, O king, O God, who shalt be seed? What shall I say? As Eden's fountains welled brightly betwixt their banks, so swells my soul betwixt thy love and power. And... Sweetest thoughts of foregone Eden, now for the first time since God said, Adam, walking through the trees, I dare to pluck you as I plucked erewhile the lily or pink, the rose or heliotrope. 
so pluck are you so largely with both hands and throw you forward on the outer earth wherein we are cast out to sweeten it as thou christ to loom it holdest heaven broadly above our heads the christ is gradually transfigured into humanity and suffering o saviour christ thou standest mute in glory like the sun we worship in thy silence saviour christ thy brows grow grander with a forecast woe diviner with the possible of death we worship in thy sorrow saviour christ how do thy clear still eyes transpierce our souls as gazing through them toward the father throne in pathetical full deity serenely as the stars gaze through the air straight on each other o pathetic christ thou standest mute in glory like the moon eternity stands always fronting god a stern colossal image with blind eyes and grand dim lips that murmur evermore god 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 while the rush of life and death the roar of act and thought of evil and good the avalanches of the ruining worlds tolling down space the new world's genesis budding in fire the gradual humming growth of the ancient atoms and first forms of earth the slow procession of the swaveling seas our fermental waters and the noise of the broad fluent strata of pure airs and these flow onward in the intervals of that reiterated sound of god which word innumerous angels straightway lift wide on celestial altitudes of song the choral adoration and then drop the burden softly shunting the last notes in silver wings Howbeit in the moon of time, eternity shall wax as dumb as death, while a new voice beneath the spheres shall cry, God, why hast thou forsaken me, my God? And not a voice in heaven shall answer it. The transfiguration is complete in sadness. Thy speech is of the heavenlies yet, O Christ. Awfully human are thy voice and face. Thy nature overcomes me from thine eyes. In the set noon of time, shall one from heaven an angel fresh from looking upon god descend before a woman blessing her with perfect benediction of pure love for all the world in all its elements for all the creatures of earth air and sea for all men in the body and in the soul unto all ends of glory and sanctity o pale pathetic christ i worship thee i thank thee for that woman then at last I wrapping round me your humanity, which being sustained shall neither break nor burn. Beneath the fire of the Godhead will tread earth, and ransom you and it, and set strong peace betwixt you and its creatures. With my pangs I will confront your sins, and since those sins have sunken to all nature's heart from yours, the tears of my clean soul shall follow them and set a holy passion to work clear absolute consecration in my brow of kingly whiteness shall be crowned anew your discrowned human nature look on me as i shall be uplifted on a cross and darkness of eclipse and anguished dread so i shall lift up my pierced hands not into dark but light not unto death but life beyond the reach of guilt and grief the whole creation henceforth in my name take courage o thou woman man take hope your grave shall be as smooth as eden's sword beneath the steps of your prospective thoughts and one step past it a new eden gate shall upon a hinge of harmony and let you through to mercy ye shall fall no more within that eden nor pass out any more from it in which hope move on first sinners and first mourners live and love doing both nobly because lowly live and work strongly because patiently and for the deed of death trust it to god that it will be well done unrepented of and not to loss and thence with constant prayers fasten your soul so high that constantly the smile of your heroic cheer may float above all floods of earthly agonies, purification being the joy of pain. The vision of Christ vanishes. Adam and Eve stand in an ecstasy. 
the earth zodiac pales away shade by shade, as the stars, star by star, shine out in the sky. And the chant from the two earth spirits, as they sweep back into the zodiac and disappear with it, accompanies the process of change. By the mighty word thus spoken, both for living and for dying, we our homage oath once broken, fasten back again in sighing and the creatures and the elements renew their covenanting. Here forgive us all our scorning, here we promise milder duty, and the evening and the morning shall reorganize in beauty, a Sabbath day of Sabbath joy for universal chanting. And if still this melancholy may be strong to overcome us, if this mortal and unholy we still fail to cast out from us, if we turn upon you unaware your own dark influences, if ye tremble when surrounded by our forest pine and palm trees, if we cannot cure the wounded with our gum trees and our balm trees, and if your souls all mournfully sit down among your senses, Yet, O oh mortals, do not fear us, we are gentle in our languor. Much more good ye shall have near us than any pain or anger, and our God's refracted blessing in our blessing shall be given. By the desert's endless vigil we will solemnize your passions, by the wheel of the black eagle we will teach you exultations, when he sails against the wind, to the white spot up in heaven. Ye shall find us tender nurses to your weariness of nature, and our hands shall stroke the curses, dreary furrows from the creature, till your bodies shall lie smooth in death, and straight and slumberful. Then a couch we will provide you, where no summer heats shall dazzle, strewing on you and beside you thyme and rosemary and basil, and the yew tree shall grow overhead to keep all safe and cool, till the holy blood awaited shall be chrism around us running, whereby newly consecrated we shall leap up in God's sunning to join the spheric company which purer worlds assemble. While renewed by new evangels, soul consummated, made glorious, ye shall brighten past the angels, ye shall kneel to Christ victorious, and the rays around his feet, beneath your sobbing lips, shall tremble. The fantastic vision has all passed, the earth's zodiac has broken like a belt, and is dissolved from the desert. The earth's spirits vanish, and the stars shine out above. Adam and Eve advance into the desert, hand in hand. Hear our heavenly promise, through our mortal passion. Love ye shall have from us, in a pure relation. As a fish or bird swims or flies, if moving, we unseen are heard to live on by loving. Far above the glances of your eager eyes, listen, we are loving. Listen through man's ignorances, listen through God's mysteries. Listen down the heart of things, ye shall hear our mystic wings, murmurous with loving, through the opal door, listen evermore, how we live by loving. When your bodies, therefore, reach the grave, their goal, softly will we care for, each enfranchised soul, softly and unlawfully, through the door of opal, toward the heavenly people, floated on a minor fine, into the full chant divine, we will draw you smoothly, while the human in the minor makes the harmony diviner. Listen to our loving. There a soul of glory shall breathe on you as you come, ruffling round the doorway all the light of angeldom. From the Empyrean centre, heavenly voices shall repeat, souls redeemed and pardoned enter, for the chrism on you is sweet. And every angel in the place, low lily shall bow his face, folded fair on softened sounds, because upon your hands and feet he images his master's wounds. Listen to our loving. So, 
in the universe's consummated undoing, our seraphs of white mercies shall hover round the ruin. Their wings shall stream upon the flame, as if incorporate of the same, in elemental fusion, and calm their faces shall burn out, with a pale and mastering thought, and a steadfast looking of desire, from out between the clefts of fire, while they cry, in the holy name, to the final restitution, listen to our loving. So, when the day of God is, to the thick graves are counted, awaking the dead bodies, the angel of the trumpet shall split and shatter the earth to the roots of the grave, which never before were slackened, and quicken the charnel birth, with his blast so clear and brave, that the dead shall start ere it stand erect, and every phase of the burial place shall the awful single look reflect, wherewith he them awakened, listen to our loving. But while is the horse of death, he will leap up wild with the clamour, above and beneath. And where is his tamer on that last day, when he crieth, ha, ha, to the trumpet's blare, and poets the earth's asaldama, when he tosseth his head the drear white steed, and ghastly champeth the last moon ray, what angel there can lead him away, that the living may rule for the dead? Yet a tamer shall be found, one more bright than seraph crowned, and more strong than cherub bold, elder too than angel old, by his grey eternities. He shall master and surprise the steed of death, for he is strong and he is fain. He shall quell him with a breath, and shall lead him where he will, with a whisper in the ear, full of fear, and a hand upon the mane, grand and still. Through the flats of Hades, where the souls assemble, he will guide the dead steed, calm between their ranks, while, like beaten dogs, they a little moan and tremble, to see the darkness curdle from the horse's glittering flanks. Through the flats of Hades, where the dreary shade is, up the steep of heaven will the tamer guide the steed, up the spheric circles, circle above circle, we who count the ages, shall count the tolling tread, every hoof-fall striking a blinder, blanker sparkle, from the stony orbs, which shall show as they were dead. All the way the dead steed, with tolling hoofs shall travel, ashen grey the plants shall be, motionless as stones, loosely shall the systems eject their parts cotevo, stagnant in the spaces shall float the pallid moons, suns that touch their apogees, Wheeling from their level, shall run back to their axles in wild, low, broken tunes. Up against the arches of the crystal ceiling, from the horse's nostrils shall steam the blurting breath. Up between the angels, pale with silent feeling, will the tamer calmly lead the horse of death. Cleaving all that silence, cleaving all that glory, will the tamer lead him straightway to the throne. Look out, O Jehovah! To this I bring before thee, with the hand nail-pierced, I, who am thy son. Then the eye divinest, from the deepest, flaming, on the mystic courser, shall look out in fire. Blind, the beast shall stagger, where it overcame him, meek as lamb at pasture, bloodless in desire. Down the beast shall shiver, slain amid the taming, and, by life essential, the phantasm death expire. Listen, man, through life and death, through the dust and through the breath. Listen down the heart of things. Ye shall hear our mystic wings, murmurous with loving. Gabriel, O oh Gabriel, what wouldst thou with me? I heard thy voice sound in the angel's song, and I would give thee question. Question me. Why have I called thrice to my morning star, and had no answer? All the stars are out, and answer in their places. Only in vain I cast my voice against the outer rays of my star, shut in light behind the sun. No more reply than from a breaking string, breaking when touched. Or is she not my star? Where is my star? My star! Have ye cast down her glory like my glory? 
Has she waxed mortal like Adam? Has she learnt to hate like any angel? She is sad for thee. All things grow sadder to thee, one by one. Live, work on, O oh, earthy, by the actual stension, speed the arrow worthy of a pure ascension. From the low earth round you, reach the heights above you. From the stripes that wound you, seek the loves that love you. God's divinest burneth plain through the crystal diaphane of our loves that love you. Gabriel, O oh Gabriel, what wouldst thou with me? Is it true, O oh thou Gabriel, that the crown of sorrow which I claimed another claims, that he claims that too? Lost one, it's true. That he will be an exile from his heaven to lead those exiles homeward? It is true. That he will be an exile by his will, as I by mine election? It is true. That I shall stand sole exile finally? made desolate for fruition. It is true. Gabriel! I hearken. Is it true besides, a right true, that mine orient star will give her name of bright and morning star to him, and take the fairness of his virtue back to cover loss and sadness? It is true. Untrue! Untrue! O morning star, O mine, who sittest secret in a veil of light far up the starry spaces, Say, untrue, speak but so loud as doth a wasted moon to Tyrene waters. I am Lucifer. All things grow sadder to me, one by one. Exiled human creatures, let your hope grow larger. Larger grows the vision of the new delight. From this chain of natures, God is the discharger, and the actual's prison opens to your sight. Calm the stars and golden, in a light exceeding, what their rays have measured, let your feet fulfill. These are stars beholden by your eyes in Eden, yet across the desert see them shining still. Future joy and far light, working such relations, hear us singing gently, exiled is not lost. God above the starlight, God above the patience, shall at last present ye, guidance worth the cost. Patiently enduring, painfully surrounded, listen how we love you, hope the uttermost, waiting for that curing which exalts the wounded, hear us sing above you, exiled but not lost. The stars shine on brightly while Adam and Eve pursue their way into the far wilderness. There is a sound through the silence, as of the falling tears of an angel. End of Scene 3